Trump or Kamala? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. You know, Americans are voting today to elect their president. And uh, I felt like making this video to wish all Americans well on their journey to elect their president. Friends, to elect their president. So I'm so happy for the Americans. Like, I'm so happy for you, you know? <laughs> I'm so happy. But you know what is unique about American election? Like, everybody's following. Every country is following. Even those that are not Americans and uh, that are living outside of USA. Like, people living in UK are following. Australia, they are following. Africa, following. Um, China, <laughs> they are following. Like, every, everywhere, everywhere. And when you just go to YouTube and other social media platforms, American elections, like this 2024 election is everywhere on every te television station, CNN, Al Jazeera, everywhere. You know, I have friends, many, many of them living in the U.S. And, you know, I think American people are good. They are good people. <laughs> Yeah, so I decided to make this video today to share um, my, 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 my thoughts and also to share something from the Bible with all my friends that are living in America, like with all my friends that are voting today, okay? So this is a very short Bible verse that I want to share with you today, you know, and uh, it is found in Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 and uh, 21. The Bible says, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise. God is going to set up king or president for the United States. You know, so biblically, let us all believe that whatever result that America is going to get today or tomorrow, God influenced that. You know, God influenced that because the Bible says God sets up kings and he removes kings. You know, God has the absolute power to do things. So friends, if you are watching me right now from U.S., let me know that in the comments. And also, let me know the states you are watching me from. Yes, um, I have friends in Georgia. I have friends in California. I have friends in the United um, U New York. Yes, <laughs> in New York, like almost every state in the U.S. Almost every state. Now, I want us to watch this documentary about American election. All right, very short documentary and. Uh, um, we will end it right there. Okay, so let's watch it right now. Make sure he does face a consequence and that'll be at the ballot box in November. Kamala mentioned my name, I think, 21 times. She didn't mention the border. She didn't mention inflation. She didn't mention anything but my name over and over and over again. The countdown to the 5th of November is on, with Kamala Harris and Donald Trump vying for the Oval Office. So who will become America's next president? While around 240 million people will vote to pick the United States' 47th Commander-in-Chief, a relatively small number of them are likely to settle this pivotal question. A handful of the 50 states could hold the key to the White House. These are called the swing states. As the name goes, they could swing either Democrat or Republican. They're also known as battleground states or purple states. They could potentially be won by either candidate. So parties tend to spend disproportionate amount of time, resources and energy on bagging these states.
One way to identify swing states is political realignment and the other is tight margins in races. In 2020, the states that voted for current President Joe Biden, who's a Democrat, but chose former Republican President Donald Trump in 2016, have been highlighted as swing states. They are Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. These five states, along with North Carolina and Nevada, were won by a margin of three percentage points or less. Both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump's campaigns have been at full throttle to win over the voters in these states. Let's look at each swing state in the 2024 US presidential election. Arizona, also known as the Grand Canyon State. In the 2020 race, Arizona, for the first time since 1996, voted to back a Democrat. For decades, the state has been characterized as red, but Joe Biden flipped it by about 10,000 votes in 2020. The state borders Mexico, so it has been at the center of a raging immigration debate. The issue has been a top concern among voters. Though border crossings have fallen in recent months, they hit a record high in December 2023 and January 2024. But Donald Trump has repeatedly attacked Vice President Harris on the current administration's record on immigration. The former U.S. president has also promised the largest deportation operation in U.S. history if he's back in the White House. Apart from immigration, abortion access has also left Arizona divided. State Republicans attempted to bring back a 160-year-old near-complete ban on terminating pregnancies, but the move was foiled. Next up is Georgia, the Peach State. It's a critical battleground state for both leaders as they struggle to gain the voters' attention. In 2020, Joe Biden flipped the state which was held by the Republicans since 1996. Biden won the state by a 0.2% margin. Though the margin was too little to call it a decisive win, it was key to Biden's path to the presidency. It was here in Georgia's Fulton County where Donald Trump was accused of election interference, landing him in one of his four criminal prosecutions. Trump and 18 others have been accused of conspiring to overturn the narrow defeat in the state. He, however, denies any wrongdoing. A third of Georgia's population is African-American. The state has one of the country's largest proportions of black residents. Analysts say this demographic was pivotal in Joe Biden flipping the state in the last election. Moving now to Michigan, the Great Lakes state. It has picked the winning presidential candidate in the last two elections. Michigan had been reliably blue since 1992 after voting exclusively Republican in the 1970s and 80s. But in 2016, it turned into a major battleground after Trump won there by less than 11,000 votes. In 2020, Joe Biden swung the state back to blue with a wider margin. But currently, the state has become symbolic of countrywide anger against President Biden due to his support for Israel in its war against Gaza. During the Michigan Democratic primary contest in February, when Joe Biden was still running for a second term in office, over 100,000 voters chose uncommitted on their ballots. Kamala Harris has taken a slightly tougher stance on Israel. But whether it will be enough to change the voters' minds, well, we'll find out in November. Next is Nevada. The Silver State has been a more traditional example of a swing state. In the last four elections, the state voted blue. But Nevada voted Republican from the 1960s through the early 2000s. The only exception was Bill Clinton, who won the state in 1992 and again in 96. Experts say there are signs of a possible return to its Republican roots. Both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are hoping to win the state's sizable Latino population. Unemployment is also one of the major concerns here. The state has the highest unemployment rate in the U.S. at 5.1% after California and the District of Columbia. Then there's North Carolina, the Tar Heel state of the Old North state. 
Since 1980, it has voted Republican in every single election except 2008, choosing Barack Obama. In recent presidential contests, the victory margins have been razor thin. In 2020, the victory margin in North Carolina was just 1.3%. Poll pundits say it will be a toss-up in November, since the race is extremely tight with no clear winner. The sixth on the list of swing states is Pennsylvania. With 19 electoral votes, it's the most important swing state this November. The Keystone state clinched the presidency for Joe Biden in 2020. The big question is, can Kamala Harris keep it blue? Both sides have campaigned hard in the state. Donald Trump even survived an assassination attempt here after a bullet dodged past him and hurt his ear. Donald Trump broke the blue streak in the state with his 2016 victory. But four years later, in 2020, Biden secured a blue wall that also included Michigan and Wisconsin. Now, Trump is hoping to lure Pennsylvania voters back. The seventh and final one is Wisconsin, the Badger State. It also picked the winning candidate in both the 2016 and 2020 elections, but only by a margin of around 20,000 votes each time. Since 1988, Wisconsin had been a reliably blue Rust Belt state. Trump broke that streak in 2016 and turned it red. Analysts say it states like Wisconsin where an impact could be made by third-party candidates. Among them is Green Party's Jill Stein. The Democrats have been fighting to remove her from the ballot in Wisconsin, saying that the Green Party did not comply with the state election laws. Republican candidate Donald Trump has described the state as really important. He said, and I quote, If we win Wisconsin, we win the whole thing. The Republican National Convention was held in Milwaukee. Kamala Harris was also rallying in the same city when the Democratic Convention nominated her as their presidential candidate. In the United States, when a sitting president is up for a re-election, fewer states tend to change parties. In the past eight U.S. presidential elections, the 1992 election had the highest number of states that switched sides. 22 states flipped. It's often called the year of political realignment, when Democrat Bill Clinton defeated incumbent President George H. Bush. In 1992, states including Colorado, Maryland and even California, which had voted Republican for years, chose to go blue, and then reliably stayed that way for the next decade. Alignment in U.S. History So that was a short documentary about U.S. election, and you know, like whenever America is kind of um, going to elect the uh, president, like there is this kind of vibe, USA, USA, USA. You know, I like that. <laughs> I like that. You know, it 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 means that the country is united. Yes, even though there are people that belong to different political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans. You know they are one people they are one americans you know so i like that vibe i like it friends friends this is all that i had to share with you today um as i said this video was just a video to wish all americans well especially the sdas right well because you are voting today okay so god bless you all god bless you god bless you god bless america <laughs> thanks for watching see you next time god bless